Hey guys, Meteorologist Chris Tomer here. Let's talk some mountain weather on this 11th day of September. I want to start with this live camera. This is Mount Washburn. If you've ever been up to uh, Yellowstone, then you know this. But the view, uh, we've seen thunderstorms overnight nail the Tetons and then kind of cruise up through Yellowstone. I'll show you the radar in a second, but you can see some of the low-lying rain clouds off into the distance there um, from Mount Washburn. A pretty cool view there. I love, absolutely love um, Yellowstone. Um, let me show you what that, uh, what that radar looks like here. So um, here it is. Let me zoom in. You can see that what's left. I mean, there were thunderstorms all across the Tetons earlier this morning. Now everything is, is rolling away um, up into parts of Montana. And you can see some of the blue coloring there on the radar. A little bit of snow over the highest peaks, and now you've got clearing behind this across the Tetons and the Wind Rivers. This is just the start of what we're going to see over the next probably two and a half days with the snow chances across um, the Wind Rivers, across potentially the higher peaks of Yellowstone, southwest Montana, the high Uintas, the highest peaks of Colorado. Um, so we've got additional action coming. Uh, with this cold front and that's what you're looking at right here essentially is that initial cold front uh, with this storm system moving in um, here are my bullet points so again two to three strong cold fronts in the forecast and some of the the fronts will draw in a little bit of monsoon moisture so that may juice it up just a little bit and again snow chances on only the very highest peaks of these states so and you can see the timeline here I won't go through all these dates for Colorado, Utah, Wyoming, Montana, and also British Columbia. But between today, tomorrow, and the 13th, that's the first shot of snow for the highest peaks in Colorado, Utah, Wyoming, and also Montana. And then, of course, there's a second batch, a second cold front, and then potentially a third one further down the road. So at least we've got to a few different ones to talk about here. Let me show you what the satellite view shows. So this is water vapor satellite imagery across the west, and you're also looking at the Pacific so you can see what's coming. Um, now on this, these oranges and reds, that's going to be your drier air in the mid-levels of the atmosphere. What we want to look for is all of this. All the whites, the blues, the greens, that's going to be your moisture in the middle of the atmosphere. That's where the action is. Um, and so here's our area of low pressure. You can see the spin dip in the jet stream with it, and that's what's on the southwest flow cranking up some of this action in Wyoming and now moving into Montana and then later today we'll likely see afternoon thunderstorms pop up over parts of uh, Colorado and, and it may be snow over the highest peaks and also Wyoming and Montana so we'll see a second round likely popping up in the afternoon heating with this and then you've got another big dip in the jet back here look at all of this in the atmosphere all that water vapor so these are the first two of what could potentially be three disturbances moving in across a lot of the West. Um, in fact, here's the middle of the atmosphere. These are atmospheric pressure anomalies. This is effective Saturday, 913. This is the same area of low pressure I was just showing you on the, uh, the satellite. It, it really hasn't moved much by the time we get into Saturday. It's right there, essentially, with the dip in the jet over a lot of the inner mountain. And so it's still affecting Colorado, Utah, Wyoming. It's still affecting those areas with cooler temperatures and precipitation with some snow over the very highest peaks in a lot of those, uh, in a lot of those areas. Then there's a second teeny tiny uh, little disturbance. Let me point it out right here. There's your pressure anomaly right there. And that's going to cross a little further to the north. And this is effective on 916. So that's a little one, but that should bring a little bit of uh, action and cooler temperatures and maybe a little bit of snow farther north, further north. And then you've got maybe one behind that as well. Now let me take you into Colorado and give you a really closer analysis here. This is for Red Mountain Pass in southwest Colorado. I do think the San Juans of Colorado could see potentially four, five, six, seven, eight inches above 13,000 feet with this. And, and here's why. So this is a time height forecast. Um, you start down here on the lower right and that's how you read it and you go in this direction into the future. Um, and look at the green, that's your moisture. That's what I'm really searching for. And you've got good moisture at ridge top and high peak level with all of that green all the way from basically today, this afternoon, tonight, tomorrow uh, on the 12th, and then 
all the way through the 13th as well. We could see some, some snow accumulation over the high peaks. Uh, freezing level tends to drop a little bit. So again, I think 13 is a good level for snow. It might go, it might go lower than that, but um, really good to see all of this green on this time height forecast. And we'll use those a lot more as we move into the winter. They're great for mountainous environments. Um, let's check Berthoud Pass in Colorado uh, at over 12,000. I mean, what you're looking at are snow chances and they ramp up in time. And you can see the forecast snow amounts up here. And again, this is not even at 13, really. And this runs all the way through September 26. So you can see over time, we do add snow accumulation there in Berthoud Pass. Uh, in Colorado, but I think we'll probably see more snow than this in southwest Colorado where we're really getting that flow, that southwest flow into that area. Um, okay, here's the 10 day snow forecast. And notice today versus the last couple of days, there's more purple, more pink on this. And that means potentially six inches or more. And you have that over the southwest Colorado mountains, you have that over the Wind Rivers, parts of the Bighorns, and Yellowstone. Um, so that's something to watch and it's still a little bit indicated up here in the BC and Alberta, although not as much as yesterday, uh, a little bit in the Sierra and some over the high Uintas. And there's also some in the central and northern mountains of Colorado, but that's, what's exciting. I mean, that, that's a 10 day snow forecast. So it doesn't all come at one time. You'll get some over the next few days and then another one, 16, 15, 16, 17, and then maybe a little bit more around 21, 22, somewhere right in there. So good to see. Um, okay. Let me see that. Let's go to the jet stream forecast and we'll end on this. So recall on this where you see these bright colors, those are higher wind speeds up at jet stream level of 30,000 feet roughly. And those correspond to these wind speeds and knots over here. So that's about an 80, 90 knot jet stream coming in. This is the first one. This is, we'll start this today, this animation today, September 11th at about lunchtime. And there's your dip in the jet. And again, it's gonna take its sweet time as it kind of rolls through the Intermountain West over the next two days. All right, so I'm gonna push forward on this. All right, here we go. There's uh, early Friday, September 12th. There's early September 13th. There's your dip in the jet sliding through the Intermountain and then it exits. And then we start to focus on the next one. And there's that itty bitty one I was talking about. So this is early Monday, September 15th. Let me just do a little highlighting here. So that's it right there. A little dip in the jet, little area of low pressure and some cooler air. And that would be a snow chance for some of the very highest peaks a little further north this time. All right, let's move into the future. Actually, no, let me clear that and then we'll move. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Here's early on th Tuesday, September 16th. And that kind of slides down. This really emphasizes it across a lot of the inner mountain there. Um, here's early September 17th, Wednesday. Kind of sticks around. There's early Thursday, September 18th. Another one crossing through, uh, look at that, up there in parts of BC. That's the one that could bring a little bit of snow up there to parts of BC and Alberta on 18, 19, somewhere in there. All right, here we are, lunchtime on Friday, September 19th. Uh, and there we are early on Saturday, September 20th. So we definitely have action in the forecast, guys. And it's really good to see that. We'll end on the, uh, the snow map for the next 10 days. Um, just thank you for tuning in here. I always appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.